Hey guys, this is Eren, and welcome back to the fourth video of the C++ Programming and Linux video series. In the previous video series, we have successfully compiled our first G++ C++ program, and um, before that, we have successfully installed this C++. And now, to move further, as per my understanding, uh, you should have the understanding of how G++ compiler or any other software is installed in Linux environment. I'm talking about the organization of the G++ in Linux environment. And for this, you first need to know the organization of Linux itself in the file system way, how the files of the Linux are deployed, etc, etc in this year. For this, I would like to show you a simple model. Uh, just wait a while. Let me check this. Check with this. Go inside this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Here's the Linux architecture. You can see that here's a slash sign over here, and uh, there are several branches. Uh, here are Kiko model. Uh, several branches that is specifying the other folders as slash bin slash aspen slash user slash lib slash temp and solution so in the linux architecture slash remain at the top you don't believe me let's watch it out what we use to move to change your directory okay change to the root what we call it the first line it's called the root slash change directory press enter where are we we can use the pwd present working directory press enter we are at the root now list the files what is inside this list and for long listing half a list press enter you can see that there are several other folders that are subfolders as specified in this linux architecture say you can see the slash user you can see the slash home you can see the bin you can see the s bin you can see etc you can see several more things okay now i'm going to tell you about the what these folders what these folders contain bin as the name suggests is the binary binaries all the executable files as we have created in the previous tutorial a dot out which contains the machine level instructions binaries contains these kinds of uh, files which are executable and we execute it all the time say what we use pwd command okay pwd command is a binary we use use it because it's it's an executable file when you pass it it gives us the present working directory go inside the bin let's have a look list here what are what is the content inside we can say see okay we have used the touch command okay touch is the uh, touch is the binary we use the touch command so whatever the command we use whatever the executable files we can find it in the bin directory that is quite easy that is pretty simple see that it says the cat these are the commands that we have already used and there are several commands that we can use but we have not used yet okay get out of here look for something else what is inside okay now we can go with the echoes for our architecture binary is done as been as been is exactly like exactly like the uh, bin it also keeps the binaries but the special binaries the binaries that that interacts with the system and uh, these binaries are usually require the root privileges root privileges is are like the admin administrative privileges we need to provide some password to do the task and all okay get out of here too now we can see there's a etc folder and etc directory and inside the etc directory we can see the several files that are not executable but the uh, they are the very important files because it keeps the configuration for those binary files that are being used in the slash bin folder for example uh, hostname cat uh, what can do uh, hst anami press enter it's showing the host name okay so it is the information it is the file kept in kept inside the etc directory and whenever we use the command that is set in the path host name 
it gives us the sun and it reads the con content from the etc directory and reflects it here in the command so host name this host name is the binary and this host name is just a file in which the sanganak information is kept so uh, the database etc is just like a database and it binaries fetch the information from the etc database and display the information and we can keep another special uh, whatever the information required right? now come with the, the other partitions say OPT, OPT is optional partition, it usually remain empty and uh, go inside OPT, wait, 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 OPT and what we, what we can see, yeah, here's Eclipse, it's, it's just software that I've installed and on the fresh installation it was empty but I've installed, so uh, we can install, we can uh, install the optional packages here, we can use this partition uh, or this directory as per need, it usually remain empty. Now, come with the G++ okay so this is the way the Linux is installed and keeps uh, its utilities its files in this way and any other uh, software when we install it it's organized in the same manner don't believe me okay go with the G++ G++ is the executable file that asks for the no input files in this way we know that G++ is installed go with it now we want to know where our G++ is installed and for this we use the which command which G++ it will tell you which G++ is that he's talking about the G++ present in the user bin directory user directory is specifies or keeps the softwares that are added by the user for its use and its say slash bin keeps the information that is specific to the operating system slash user bin keeps the information that is uh, keeps information that are required for the software that we have installed example is a G++ ok go inside the slash user directory bin directory we can find the information here uh, somewhere 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 ok it's too pretty difficult uh, to find because there are a lot of bin binaries to install we can find that here is a G++ ok get out of here inside the user that's our self and LRT and look there there's also a bin there's also as bin there's also lib oh go oh, I forgot to talk to you about the lib get inside it enter the root list here cd lib okay this is the root lib directory and we can see that here there are several libraries that in that are, that are started with the lib extension these are the library files that we would create in our future tutorials using the C++ also. These are the code and we can that, that are pre-written and we can use this code to create our new application. Say Linux is created the, and other softwares are deployed over it. They are using these libraries as a support to work. In a similar way, when we go inside the user, bin, uh, no, not bin, get inside, we can see here is the lib. These are these lib files are necessary. Wait, wait, wait. These lib files are necessary for the functionality of the user installed software. So slash user is for the users. And uh, now it's installed with this. Get out of it. You are clear with the binary. You are clear with the l l lib lib, right? And the similar folders are there. Uh, there's support the SRC go with this SRC stands for the source we can keep our source in this particular file we can compile it and go on with it get off it it's the Linux headers it's just uh, for, for some other software not exactly G++ because all the binaries you can see inside the bin uh, there have a lot of other binaries other than G++ now come with the include folder this is a very important folder and we you we are in the need to understand it recently include folder it includes the header files usually the header files and uh, what these header files contain contains these header files just contain the data uh, or the headers uh, the in which there are the definitions for the functions that we have created in previous tutorial uh, for functions definition for the functions that are defined in the lib library folder that have so the whatever the exact functions that we are going to use 
in our C++ program are defined in the header file and header file specified that which library function that you need to access and in this way so what are the um, header files specific to the C++ go inside the C++ let's have a watch it's showing the version go inside the version let's have a watch okay there's a hell lot of header files out there and we will use it in a C++ program we need to include these files and corresponding to these input uh, in these files we can uh, uh, use the several functionalities defined in the library file that is defined just here user lib so user include C++ 4.6 contains the definition the headers just saying that the we are going to use this this thing in our program and the actual definition how we gonna use this is specified in the user lib directory so this is enough information and this was really a long tutorial but was important for you to know and uh, we are ending up this tutorial now and with the file system architecture please go through to it because it is very important google it grab some information it's and, uh, and from the next video we'll continue with uh, creating a program with all this basic information so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe